such thoughtful words. Um, I'm beginning my journey in Thailand and across the region, and I can't think of a better way to start. There was just so much that you said that resonates so deeply with me. And, you know, just to, to call out one of your messages, I think, you know, all over the world, um, you can't watch the news and exist without feeling like there's just, there are rising tides of you know, nationalism and prejudice and conflict and, you know, it, it feels like such a scary time to <laughs> live. Um, and as, as I think about that, more and more every day I become conscious of the fact that our real hope is in our classrooms today. It's the kids in our classrooms who we need to be growing as leaders who can shape a better future um, for themselves and and for all of us. So I've never felt such a strong imperative around this work of ours and, and can tell that you feel the same way about um, the situation here in, in your country. Um, so thank you for that. I'm excited to be here with Ta and, and all of the people who've been uh, along on this Teach for Thailand journey just to share a bit about what it is that we're working to do across the world, a little bit about what we're learning and, uh, and where we're headed, and then I know Ta will, will share the latest with, with Teach for Thailand. I came to this journey about 28 years ago now, of all things, when I was a senior in college at Princeton University and thought of the idea of Teach for America. Um, really, I found myself just searching for something I wasn't finding, and I felt that I was one of thousands of graduating seniors in my own country who were really looking for a chance to make a real difference in the world, and most specifically to address the issue of inequity. You know, just the fact that in, in, our, in our country, certainly a place that you know, likes to think of itself as a, a land of equal opportunity. The reality is that where kids are born does so much to predict their educational outcomes and in turn life outcomes. And of course that turns out to be true almost everywhere in the world. Um, and so this idea just came to me. You know, all the recruiters at the time were investment banks and management consulting firms banging down our doors asking us to commit just two years to work in their firms. Um, and I thought, why aren't we being recruited as aggressively to commit just two years to teach in our lowest income communities? And I became obsessed with this idea um, that those two years would make a real impact for kids and that at the same time, they would reshape the priorities and the career trajectories of those folks who, who committed to it. So that germ of an idea um, became my senior thesis and then became Teach for America. I never would have guessed that it would bring me here to Thailand. Um, but after for many years focusing on working to make Teach for America bigger and better, and you know, over the years now it has enlisted about 50,000 of the top recent grads in the U.S. in this movement, and they really haven't left. And, and you'll hear that this is the case all over the world. You know, they commit two years to teach, but it's so transformational that whether they stay in the classroom or move into school leadership or educational system leadership or go into policy or health, they're working on the related issues that hold the most vulnerable kids back. Um, but one of the best parts of the journey started about 11 years ago when I, there was something in the water in the rest of the world and I met within one year 13 people from India to Lebanon to Chile to China to the next place who were just determined to do something similar in their countries. And they were looking for help and that is what led to the Teach for All network which is now in 45 countries around the world and growing, including five in, um, in Southeast Asia, including Thailand and Malaysia, the Philippines, and now recently Cambodia and Vietnam, and, and we hope soon uh, other countries in the region, hopefully including Indonesia. The, the purpose that brings all of us together across the Teach for All network um, is to develop collective leadership to ensure that all children fulfill their potential. Um, when we say collective leadership, we mean the kind of leaders who will inspire leadership in others, in their students, 
in other teachers in their schools, in, in others in their communities. And so again, it's so resonant with what you said earlier that you know, we are working to enlist the rising generation of leaders in all these countries around the world to channel their energy into the arena of working with their most marginalized kids, but then to invest in their development so that they can help alongside others catalyze um, leadership beyond themselves. And I think what brings us to conviction around the importance of this purpose is just a recognition that the problem we're addressing, the fact, again, that the circumstances of kids' birth predict their educational outcomes and in turn life outcomes is a very complex and systemic challenge. It's not a challenge that starts in classrooms or in schools. You know, we have whole segments of kids who are just facing many extra challenges. And they go to schools that were not set up to meet their extra needs. And there's a whole set of kind of policies and practices and mindsets that fuel that very complex issue. And so when you really think about what it will actually take to solve it, as crucial as teachers are, again, we won't be able to solve it from within classrooms alone. And we really won't be able to solve it from within education alone either. Um, we need people at every level of the education system, at every level of policy, and even across sectors working together to take a problem that complex on in its full complexity. If we don't take it on in its full complexity, it won't produce truly meaningful and truly sustainable change. So that is really the theory behind our work. Um, and how we go about it is, first of all, so each of these 45 independent organizations led by folks like Ta, local leaders who develop a vision for making this happen in their countries, they're working to build a movement among the, again, the rising generation in their countries, people who most likely probably would not have thought of teaching. They're heavily recruited, you know, the most heavily recruited folks in their countries from all academic majors, all ultimate career interests, and they're asking them to commit two years to teach. Um, they are then investing a lot in the training and development of those teachers in pursuit of a couple of things. One, they want to ensure that the kids the teachers are teaching um, have a really positive experience with these teachers. We're trying to produce teachers who will help put the kids on a different trajectory. And at the same time, what we've seen is that teaching successfully is an incredible foundation for the kind of leadership we need. Because once you've taught successfully, you realize that your kids can do anything. They have incredible potential. The key is to meet them with high expectations and to meet their needs with the extra supports. And so once people have gone through that, they realize we could actually solve this problem. And they have a very different understanding of what it will take to solve that problem. Um, then these organizations keep investing in, in these folks after their two years, working to build their collective leadership, working to support um, and accelerate their career trajectories into, into whether it be policy leadership roles or school leadership roles or teacher leadership roles, um, and all in pursuit of systemic change. And then one of the things we can do across the network is help these local leaders learn from each other. Um, so that is what we're working to do. There are a couple of things that we have seen, big lessons we've learned over the first almost decade in this global journey. And I thought I would share with you these two big lessons because they're really what give us so much optimism about Teach for Thailand and, and really what we can accomplish together across the Teach for All network. The first big lesson, um, and I'm going to tell the story of Pune, India, uh, which was one of the first placement sites of Teach for India. Um, but the first real lesson is, is that across such diverse contexts, this approach seems to be producing the kind of leadership that we need. And in fact, um, we're seeing real evidence that leadership really is the core of the solution. Um, so I think about Pune, India, where Teach for India has placed about 500 teachers now over the last, say, nine years. Um, and I recently spent some time in Pune and was just amazed by already what their alumni are working to do. One of them has built a, essentially a collective impact organization. He's 
brought together the business leaders, the governmental leaders, the NGOs, um, into a coalition to develop a strategic plan to improve the school system. Three of them have started different teacher development initiatives. One is retraining thousands of veteran government teachers in the Pune school system because she realized through her teaching experience that these people had great hearts and great intentions, but no one was investing in their ongoing professional development. And she's produced incredible results by giving them the kind of mentorship and opportunities for collaboration um, that the Pune school system just hadn't yet provided. Another is recruiting the fresh bachelors of education grads out of the five local Pune universities who come out of the universities really not even knowing what a lesson plan is and investing in their development and mentorship um, so that they become a force of exceptional new teachers. Another has developed an online teacher development system that all these other teacher development systems are using. Still another group of alumni have convinced the Pune school system to give them school buildings so that they can start 25 new English medium secondary schools because the English medium system in Pune stops for some reason in seventh standard. So there's no way for the kids in that system to get to university. They've already started seven schools and they're on a path to starting 25 to fully meet the need in, in Pune in the English medium system within five years. I, I'm sure I didn't begin to capture uh, you know, the extent of, of what they're doing, but hopefully that gives you some sense of the dynamics we see playing themselves out, not only in Pune, but in communities all over the world. One of the things I can see now is what's happening in my own country in communities where we've been placing a steady stream of these teachers for, in some cases now, as in the case of Washington, D.C., for over 25 years. And so you can see, to your point about this being a long game, you can really see the long-term impact of, of this effort. Um, I think about Washington, D.C. because it was our country's lowest performing of all the major urban districts um, uh, when we started working there 25 years ago. And even as of 15 years ago, it was still, even the kids in Washington, D.C. were two years behind in performance. The kids in Harlem, which is a very low-income community in New York City. Um, and there was really no hope in the school system. People just did not believe that anything could change. There was maybe about 4% of the kids in Washington, D.C. would get college degrees. So it's, it's amazing to see what's happening in Washington, D.C. today. It's the fastest improving of all the urban districts in the United States. Its graduation rates are going up every year. Its enrollment rates are going up every year. The percentage of kids taking college placement um, exams is going up every year. In fact, the kids in Washington, D.C., if you met the average 13-year-old today, they're a full year ahead of where the average 13-year-old in D.C. Uh, was just four years ago. Uh, we've never seen an urban system made, make this much progress. Um, and, you know, this is no doubt for many reasons. And there were many committed veteran teachers, many philanthropists, many governmental leaders who have been a part of that change. But I think virtually everyone in Washington, D.C. Would, would acknowledge that if it weren't for the Teach for America people, the, not only the teachers during the two years, but the alumni who never left, it's very hard to imagine how this would have happened. They've led the school system as the chancellor for the last 10 years. They've served in about three quarters of the leadership roles in the school district. They're 25% of the school principals, hundreds of teachers, four of the last six teachers of the year, the leaders of almost all the NGOs supporting the change, the deputy mayor for education, the head of the state school board, I mean, really, um, they are leading the change in DC. And this is one example, and I could tell you 20 or 25 more from my own country. Um, so that is the first lesson, that as in whatever line of work you're in, whether it be in the business community or in NGOs or in policy, leadership is everything. And yet in this sector of ours, in education and in the social sector, we so infrequently take a really intentional approach to cultivating the leadership capacity that we want to see. Um, and I think that's what the Teach for All organizations like Teach for India and Teach for Thailand are, are doing. And you can really see 
um, that over the long term, that makes a real difference. So that's the first thing that gives us real optimism about the potential in this. The second, which I never would have anticipated, um, is just how much more quickly we can move when those local leaders, and again, there's no path to progress without locally rooted leaders, but when those local leaders are globally informed, when they can share solutions and understand what's possible um, and understand best practices from other communities, they can move a lot more quickly. This is just one of the you know, 25 events that we orchestrated last year. This is some of the leaders among the teachers across the network who have gotten together in Malaysia to kind of share best practices. Um, what we've seen is that, and I think this surprises a lot of people, honestly, it, it really surprised me, that the nature of educational inequity is eerily similar from place to place. You know, the roots of the issues. Um, and the silver lining in that is that the solutions are actually shareable. And so if we go back to that Pune example, those Teach for India alumni in Pune would say we'd never be here if it weren't for what we learned was possible when we were in New Orleans and met all these Teach for America alumni, um, or were in London and met the Teach First alums who were running these truly transformational schools which helped create the blueprint for um, you know, the schools that they're starting in the English medium system. Uh, so that's the second lesson which also gives us so much optimism, just the notion that we can be a source of many, many more strong local leaders all over the world and that those local leaders can move so much more quickly if we live into our potential to help them all learn from each other. Over the past year, um, inspired by the fact that we have learned a lot in the first sort of eight, nine years in this journey, we stepped back together, came together across the network uh, to ask ourselves what we were going to work to accomplish together by 25 years from now, to your point about this being a long game. And we developed a vision um, that by 2040, we would have whole communities in every part of the world showing what's possible, showing us that all kids can have the education, support, and opportunity to shape a better future for themselves and all of us. And so that those communities will then inform and inspire a worldwide movement to do this everywhere. If I've learned one thing in the last 25 years in this, it's that this is actually possible. To your point, it's kind of in our hands. Like, we can do this if enough of our society's most promising leaders channel their energy in this direction and work to make it so. So I am hopeful and optimistic that several of those communities will be in this region and in this country um, and I'm just so excited to work alongside you in, in this effort to, to realize that. So thank you so much for your support.